okay. I know that they wanted to do dark, but... Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. I actually went out and bought this. It was $15, and I haven't watched a DC Animated Universe movie in a while. Like, the last one I really, really enjoyed was Gods and Monsters, because that was Bruce Timm and him being like, you know, Jeff Johns, your whole New 52 was kind of bullshit. I'm going to actually make these characters different. Whereas everything afterwards has been eh to okay to downright dog shit. It's unfortunate, too, because I was watching every single animated movie that was coming out. I was buying them. If it was not me, it was my dad. We were enjoying these movies right up until I moved out, and then Gods and Monsters just kind of was this turnaround. This film does kind of take a few things from a, some of the animated movies that have come out, if I'm correct. Obviously, they borrow from Flashpoint. They borrow from Justice League Dark because John Constantine is kind of the main character of this. And what happens is, honestly, what would actually probably happen going up against Darkseid if he knew you were coming? A lot of people. And I'm not talking about humans. I haven't seen this much death on screen or on the page, if you were to say, in a comic book form of well-known and a huge cast of superhero characters since Marvel's Zombies or Chronicles or whatever that was. I read it when I was 20. I thought it was like, oh, who will live to the end? And in the end, they kept on redoing its lore. I don't know. I didn't even know what the hell was going on by the last one. So yeah, basically the Justice League gets fucked and then the story jumps two years in the future and Earth also fucked. Now, if you stop here for the review and go and watch it yourself, I totally understand because it's exactly what I did actually. Jeremy Johns was reviewing it and I watched it up until this point and then I said, okay, I'm gonna go watch it myself. And I made the joke earlier about it being dark and this is kind of like the dark that Zack Snyder, I swear, wishes he could do. But it's also a bit much. It's a bit too much if I can be blatantly honest. We're seeing characters being ripped apart on screen for the reason of to just watch them die. Yes, there are some losses that are felt, but nothing hits you as hard as what happens in this opening battle. Everything afterwards is like, oh, I'm surprised he's not dead yet. Because from the track record I've seen for this movie, he's not gonna be around for long. It's a tug and go. I've seen people absolutely love this. I've seen people absolutely fucking hate this. If you want a real fun time, go and look at the user reviews for this film on IMDb. It's a goddamn war zone. People wonder why DC fans are kinda stupid. It doesn't help when we have people like this and complete vocal arguments of insanity like this. If it isn't obvious before, this film is rated R and I'll actually give it credit, it deserves the R. It's not just because there's an F-bomb in here, the graphic content. This is gore on the level of the Dead Space animated movies and if any of you have seen those, it's pretty fucking close. I think the thing that really turned me off of the DC films for a while was that they were trying to say that they were rated R when Killing Joke was not warranted for it. Justice League Dark wasn't warranted for it. The voice casting in this is decent. There are some very good exceptions. The guy who voices Constantine is the same guy who was the actual actor of him in the live action show, the very short lived one. He's great. He's phenomenal. He's the one who's giving out really good quips amongst all this dark, brooding bullshit. Freaking Candyman as Darkseid, and it's not as good as I thought it would be. And this leads me into my issue. Aside from Constantine, everyone kind of seems like they're reading their lines. Even Rosario Dawson, who is a great choice, in my opinion, as the voice for Wonder Woman. Everyone's just so meh in this entire thing. I feel that there was a lack of experience with the directors, and if you look at the directing credits, there's two guys. One of them has never directed anything. He's always been an assistant editor or assistant artist, but he's never directed anything. And the other one directed Batman Hush! And then one of the writers is for Batman Hush, and I heard that they Fuck that up badly. Essentially what they tried to do is what they did with Gotham by Gaslight, which that twist made no sense either. So lacking experience, doing shock value for shock value's sake is definitely evident in this film. There are parts where I enjoyed. There were a lot of moments where I was like, oh shit, oh wow, holy crap. It was giving me that, it was giving me that shock value for sure. The story's kinda, mm. Oddly enough, it actually even needs more time. This film's only about an hour and 20 minutes long, but 
there's so much happening. There's so many people who are dying. There's so many things going on. For instance, I'm not going to spoil who dies, but there's a significant character, never gets a line, appears, and then dies. And at the end of the movie, I was absolutely flabbergasted. I was like, wait, you're alive? Oh, that's, oh, you're dead. Cool. I didn't mind the Damian Wayne's arc in this either. He was not too bad. However, oh, it ends with Pokemon bullshit. I enjoy some aspects of it, but at the same time, I can't excuse just the level of ridiculousness that happens in it. There's definitely a lack of a directorial experience, shock value for shock value's sake, and it needs to be more filled out. However, I did like the ending and I'm probably liking it for the exact reason why a lot of people are hating it. It's the ballsiest thing to do, even though whatever they do the next one will mitigate it, most likely. In the end, I'm gonna give Dark Side Apocalypse a three out of seven. You can watch this, it's entertaining, but I'm never gonna, I don't know, you could watch this while drinking. Yeah, there's a drinking game for every single superhero that dies, take a drink. You'll be dead. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. If you enjoyed this review, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.